We hear a lot about big data, but less about complex data. And yet, for many organizations, that's their core challenge. What is it about complexity that makes it so different, difficult for a traditional analysis? Okay. So, look, if you think about it, right, the big problem with big data is not only its size. Right? That's the easiest problem to talk about. There are many other sorts of complexities that you can see in data. I'll give you an example. So, imagine if, you're, if you had a data set which might have let's say a million columns of information and however number however many number of rows okay now think about the challenge of a human being interrogating that data set right if you had to ask questions if you had to formulate queries that would be a very complex challenge right so the data set might be small but still be very complex that's one type of complexity another type of complexity is that the relationships that the data exhibits might be nonlinear in a way that are just not easy to interrogate so even with very, very simple, small data sets, uh, it's the case that you, know, you could have non-linearities in the data which are just very hard to get out. So if you think about where these problems are pertinent, right? as you sensorize the world and everything starts throwing information at you, the volume is a challenge, right? But a bigger challenge is the interrelationships between these various things which are becoming higher and higher dimensional very, very quickly, right? Genomics is a great example, you know, about a, you know, if you think about the amounts of data that you can measure about a person, you can sequence them today, that's three billion pieces of information about one person, right? And all the way down to clinical markers, which are just 10 or 20 or 30, right? That's just not true in genomics, it's true in every industry. And right? the information about singular objects that we are now able to collect is growing pretty quickly. So that's the problem of complexity. So you guys approach this complexity with topological data analysis. Mm -hmm. uh, can you describe that and then tell us a little bit about how it relates to machine learning and artificial intelligence? Yes, absolutely. So what topological data analysis is, it's developed out of this old branch of math called topology, which was developed in the 1700s, and its original aim was to quantify the qualitative aspects of algebraic equations. So for example, if you had an equation for a circle, it could help you quantify the number of pieces that it splits the plane into, which is two, the number of components that the shape is in, which is one, and so on. And that was, that's why topology was developed, right? Over the past decade, it really became possible to use the formalism of topology for real data. So what that enables us to do is to discover the shape of data and our point of view is that the shape of the data the, are, contains all the patterns within the data that you might ever be interested in. Okay? Now, its relationship to machine learning is the following. Essentially, topology is the study of functions, and machine learning uh, is basically a set of functions that we tune for data. Okay, so topology consumes machine learning in the sense that machine learning, machine learning outputs of machine learning algorithms are an input for topological data analysis. So topological data analysis is a general framework over machine learning. The distinction between machine learning and AI, frankly, is not clear to anybody. So let's leave it at that. Okay. <laughs> So one of the challenges facing the big data ecosystem is the availability of data scientists. Mm -hmm. How does the industry balance the growth of data and the dearth of data scientists while living up to those lofty expectations that people have for the industry? Yeah, in fact, that's something that we notice with all of our customers, right? You go in there and the data scientist teams are just buried with work, right? There's so much to do, not enough people to do it. So there's a few distinct challenges, right? You might have heard, right? A large percentage of the work for a data scientist is what's called data janitorial work, right? Cleaning up data and so on and so forth, constructing features, things like that. Um, our solution to this problem, as I asked thee, is to essentially produce tools for uh, tools that allow people to construct applications using machine intelligence in general, right? So that you are able to accelerate what a data scientist is able to do by four orders of magnitude, right? That's what we want to accomplish. Excellent. So how do you see the competitive landscape changing for enterprises as the progress through the big data life cycle of storage and presentation and insights? How will, will analytics be the primary competitive differentiator going forward? That's what we believe, right? So in my, the way I see this world, what we call big data today is just a bigger version of small data. Okay, so like we are producing bigger, faster, cheaper systems to store and process data, right? They are 
they have fundamental innovations in how they achieve their aims, but the aims that they are achieving are not new. We have achieved those aims in the past for smaller data sets, right? Now, again, I'm not saying it's a small achievement, right? It takes a lot of work to make it scale. We've done the work, that's great. Uh, similarly, business intelligence, uh, fundamentally, is not new, right? We've done it for the past 15, 20 years at this stage, right? We are just making it available for the new set of data repositories. Analytics is something that has basically not evolved in a long time at this point. And so I absolutely believe that the biggest advantage to be had in the whole big data ecosystem will be analytics. Excellent. Well, we've been watching you guys, and uh, we see you guys moving from the theme of uh, machine intelligence, which machine learning, rather, which we've been looking at for a long time, and moving uh, the field into the field of cogn cognitive augmentation, where it's an extension of human abilities, and it inc increases the abilities of the analyst to deal with the data that we have. So we're happy to be seeing you guys work, and thank you very much. Okay. Thank you for your time. It was very good to speak with you.